remember, we remember them fondly. We used to come to Manchester and Strawberry Point every Memorial Day. We had the two grandmas with us, um, my Grandma Malone and Grandma Barn. And we made the rounds, and we'd always stop and see Mayor Winnie. I remember we'd go up, up the steps, because we lived up on top of a, a store or something in Strawberry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'd always stop to visit them, and then we kind of made the rounds of all the other Manchester Strawberry Point relatives. Car loaded down, five kids and two grandmothers. <laughs> <laughs> making, the, making the visits on Memorial Day. <coughs> and I remember uh, Ed and I going to Manchester to go to the, to the Delaware County Fair, and Uncle, Uncle Jim lived just a couple of blocks from the fair. And we would go down and spend a day, and I, I don't know how we got back and forth, but. And uh, uh, Jim, uh, our, uh, my uncle, and uh, her, her grand, grandpa, uh, uh, who was a plasterer, worked with his father, who was a plasterer, and the father died of anthrax. And they figured that uh, he, he caught anthrax from horses' hair that was used in the plastering uh, process, and they they knew it was because the story was he was he was buried the same day he died. So that was our great grandfather, and that'd be our great grandfather. Uh, Dad, Dad's family uh, was Jim, and then Carl, uh, if you, on the picture, Carl was a deaf mute. It was Carl. Mm -hmm. And uh, Carl so he, he was sent to Council Bluffs <clears throat> and lived in Council Bluffs at, at the uh, school for the deaf. And uh, married a woman from there, and carpentered in Forest City. And one son, Harry, who had no problem hearing, and Harry uh, lived in Mason City. I used to visit Harry uh, when I was, some of the, some of the priests uh, have a week at, at Fair Lake to renew their golfing skills. <laughs> but and I, I wrote Harry to invite him to come today and got a call from his wife this week that Harry had fallen and uh, was in a care center mm -hmm. and uh, they, uh, uh, and then Bob and Uncle Bob Uncle Bob. Which is my Uncle Bob would be your, your cousin Bob. Yeah, cousin Bob. Jim's son be Jim's son. Uh, your Uncle Jim's son, yeah. yeah but Jim had two, had, had two boys, Jim and Bob, who were like age of Joe and, and Jim, or, or Ed. And uh, He was going to come too. Bob was going to come. From oh, Bob was going to come yeah. from uh, from Colorado. Bob is ninety-two, and uh, it, 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 he he started out uh, selling cars. He was a car salesman in in, in uh, Dayton, Ohio, and. Um, the, um, he, his wife was from Dayton, and uh, uh, he was a successful. Uh, Don't never mind us, Father. <laughs> this is our cook. In, in the town, they had a they had a, a screw making factory that went broke, and the town the town decided uh, that it was. 
financially worth to uh, uh, buy, buy, buy the business out. And Bob left his business as a car salesman to run this screw factory. And he, he, he was later, that factory was bought by Parker Hennepin, which is one of the 300 fortune companies. And uh, Bob worked for them for 40 years. And he was all set to, uh, <coughs> they were going to honor him for his 40 years as the oldest employee. And uh, in, in the 70s, when I was in Mount Vernon, I flew to, to London. At that time, he was in charge of all, the fac of all their factories in Europe. And came back and was in charge of all their factories here in the United States. So he was the most important person that that company ever had. But he had a TIA a couple weeks ago, so he couldn't go to that and he couldn't come here. So it would have been nice to have three of us of that generation left. Gene's father was, was 16 years older than I, and then Jim was four years younger than he, and then Ed was one year younger, and then Mary was four years younger. And I was one year younger. So you're the youngest in the yeah. Over 16 years. Uh, I was going to ask you too, Father. Um, so the brothers, there was, well, there was your dad, and then Jim, and Carl. Was there, was there anybody else? There was another one. Uh, there, there was one that died, and then one, uh, it seemed, moved away, and they lost him. Oh, uh, I, I didn't finish the, the uh, I can't remember name. Ron's question. No. Uh, one of Mother's sisters married a knight, uh, and I thought that was it, but, the, but it was Harry. Uh, and they lived in East Chain, Minnesota, which is just south of Paramount. And, and, uh, there was one boy, and he came back from service and left home and, and, and was lost. <coughs> You know, and the body of the All the girls, of course, married. And, <clears throat> but uh, uh, Bill, Bill died. Uh, mother's, mother's sister, in uh, around Surrey, married Bill Tide, and uh, they lived on a farm five miles out in the country, right next to. Uh, uh, Sacred Heart Church at Cox's Creek. And um, uh, Bill, Bill, Bill had a stroke about 1936 when he, was, when he was 50 and died. So then Aunt Bill moved to Clinton with her family and, start, and started a truck stop, or, or bought a truck stop, and, lived, and, and ran it until she retired. And so that the tides are in, are in uh, uh, Clinton, and then uh, one of her, her brothers was Jim. Mm -hmm. Jim Jim farmed uh, on, on the uh, Big Stone Lake that's between Minnesota and and um, Minnesota Minnesota and, uh, and and South Dakota. The only vacation we ever had. I think it was 1932, we went to South Dakota and spent a week with, with uh, Jim and his family. And then uh, he, he, uh, the farming was really tough. The only, the only way he survived at that time was he had some swamp land where he could make hay and, and sold the hay to the federal government. That uh, to give to the other farmers, and uh, so then he, then he moved to Clinton with his family, and one of his uh, daughters was a Franciscan nun. <laughs>